As a mom and health and wellness coach, you're no stranger to the constant juggling act of family and was to do lists and running your own business. It's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of business, feeling like you're always running a million miles per hour. Am I right? When a friend asks what you've been up to, you might automatically reply, Oh, you know, just busy with my family and growing my coaching practice, everything's going great. But it's pretty crazy. Does that sound familiar to you? But is this automatic response merely a mask to cover up the chaos we feel swirling inside? You're devoted to your family and you're passionate about growing your coaching practice. And managing the ever-present busyness can sometimes feel like an uphill battle. So how do you differentiate between genuine productivity work and mere busy work? How do you ensure that you're investing your precious times in areas that truly enrich your life and business? And how do you manage the busy in your life when it begins to feel out of control? So why do we answer with busy? Is it for the connection? Do we not want to burden them with everything that's going on in our heads? I don't know about you, but we're all busy and running around crazy. I mean, that's a really easy way to describe our lives, right? Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I head to my journal to read past entries. The reason I do this is because success leaves clues and history always seems to repeat itself. I will share this entry with you from a time when I chose to feel calm and at ease no matter the circumstances. So this was back from 2022, where I believe my words for the year were calm and ease. While we all have a lot going on, I don't really feel busy. In fact, this year, I've consciously chosen to embrace the feeling of calm and ease. Does calm and ease come easily all the time? No, I've learned that I'm the only one who can control my reactions, so I'm proactively choosing calm and ease. Even last Sunday night, when our golden doodle, boy, she is so naughty, jumped on top of the counter at 8 p.m. and ate my whole loaf of gluten-free, cooling banana breads with chocolate chips and walnuts. I'll tell you what, I was pretty disappointed that she did that. So instead of taking a nice, hot, relaxing shower before bed, no, not this girl, I was listening to my vet explain to me how to induce vomiting. Thank God for Dr. Jerry. This was the perfect opportunity to the, the crazy in, but I didn't. Nope, I didn't. Instead, I embraced calm and ease. Did it take everything in me to keep it together? Yes. Yes, it did. It took every fiber of my being to embrace calm and ease and not want to go off the deep end, feeling overwhelmed. But I did it anyway. I don't know about you, but after reading this journal entry, it made me want to choose calm and ease to manage my busyness. So how exactly do you manage the feeling of being busy and overwhelmed when they keep popping up in your life? In spite of the situation you can't handle and everything feels like it's out of control. Well, here's a couple of ways that I've created in my life to be able to help manage that busyness. First, you want to make sure you have a great routine for scheduling your week and being okay that you don't have to let some things go. Of course, this will feel difficult. However, for right now, you know that some things have to give. Learn to accept not everything ought to be done by you. Basically, know that sometimes your schedule will be off and you'll have unexpected things come up that you didn't plan or schedule. Trust me, I have done so much thought work around this. In this situation, nothing will throw me off my game more than if my schedule or the outline of my day would get off in any way, shape, or form. It drove me crazy. When the crazy happens, embracing calm and ease will not throw me off my game nearly as much. Plan your week. So if you've ever wondered how to create a great routine for scheduling your week, the trick is just to plan a day that actually works the best for you to plan out your upcoming week. You may do this on a Monday morning, first thing, Friday afternoon, or even over the weekend. Despite what you think, planning doesn't have to take a long, drawn-out process. Actually, I encourage you to set a time limit on how long you're going to spend on your week. May I suggest to not go over one hour? You should be able to nail this in an hour. 
Basically, you simply sit down and you map out what you have going on the week ahead. When you decide ahead of time what you'll do, this is huge for not feeling so busy because you can see what you have going on. It's all laid out ahead of time. You just need to make sure that you find that day that works the best for you so that you can map it out and you'll be consistent when you map it out. So here is one thing that I need to make sure that I don't overlook when I'm mapping out my week. I have to get out of the house for an appointment or I have to take the kids somewhere. Okay. That's great. I need to block out time to get out the door. It's for me that generally is about 10 minutes before I plan to walk out the door. See if I can find every number of last minute items that somehow seem important to me during those precious moments instead of getting out the door. Again, maybe it's just me, but for some reason I noticed this water dish is empty for the dogs. Or, oh boy, did I actually feed them today and they ate all their dog food? Typically, yeah, but I don't remember seeing them eat the dog food. Or, uh, of course, I have clothes in the washing machine that need to be thrown in the dryer. Okay, again, maybe this is just me, but those last few minutes are when I seem to find all those little things that add up pretty quickly. However, I always buffer in 10 minutes because I know me and it's specifically in my calendar, get out the door because I know for some reason I need that time. Also, make sure you include your time to truly get ready, not your PR of the fastest time that you ever got ready. You need to plan the amount of time that will be realistic for you to get ready. Be sure to work backwards from your appointment so that you have all that in your calendar and drive time. Don't forget about the drive time. I have that in my calendar as well. Another thing that needs to be in your calendar are your big rocks. These are the things that you plan to do in the upcoming week that are non-negotiable. There are the important things that you want to make sure that happen. So for example, you want to make sure that you have time set aside for yourself time for whatever it is that helps fill you up and you leave you a little bit more calm and at ease in your life. This could be meditation, prayer, journaling, exercise, whatever it is, you need to make sure you have that in your calendar. Without a doubt, those big rocks in your calendar are all important things that cannot be overlooked or missed to make sure that you have time set aside for things that allow you to manage your busyness. So the big rocks will be appointments, the things your kids need to go to that you need to be part of. You want to make sure you have at least one big thing that you will accomplish a day. Like what's that one thing that if you get it done, you've won the day. And I'm not talking about a whole project that has like 10 tasks to it. Like what's one big thing that you can get done? Secondly is letting go of some things. Okay, I've said this before. You can do it. It's really not that big of a deal. You know in your heart there are things in your life right now that are no longer serving you, but you keep doing them and doing them because you've always done it. It's okay. It's okay to let them go. I give you permission right now to let them go. Please check in with yourself. Check in with how you're feeling is this really something you want to do? What if you reserve that valuable time for things that bring calm and ease in your life? Certainly let go of things that are no longer serving you at this time in your life. This is where I personally need to check in when I'm feeling that chaotic busyness and I want to feel more calm and ease. After all, by embracing calm and ease, I learn to accept that I cannot load extras into my calendar, activities that I know are really going to push my schedule. Going out for dinner too often or trying to put too many things in one day. I know now that I'm the type of person that if I have more than one or two max big activities, it's going to completely drain me. And when I load up on all those extra things on my schedule, you guessed it, I'm not going to feel very calm and I'm going to feel 
busy. I want to be able to manage that busy feeling and embrace calm and ease. There I am aware by taking a step back and reviewing all the items on my calendar for the week. That way I know if somebody asks me to do something during the week, I can go ahead and look at what I have planned out on my paper planner or in my calendar and know, oh, hey, yeah, this or this is going to work or this is not going to work for me to do. I cannot take on another thing. Because if I take on too many things, it's going to open the door back up to feeling frantic and busy and trying to get everywhere and do everything for everybody. And for me personally, this is how I know when I'm scheduling too much. Do you have a trigger that alerts you as well? How do you know? Well, I know when my day is getting to feel frantic and busy because I start to dream at night that I'm trying to get places. Here is what happens in my dream. I need to get someplace and I can't get out the door to actually get there and go. The reason is I have all these I'm trying to gather and I'm putting them in my suitcase or my basket or my bag or whatever I'm carrying out. And I struggle to get everything gathered up because things are everywhere and I'm frantically trying to organize it and pick it up so that we can get out the door on time. This dream, when I start to have it, is my trigger. Once again, I know that I'm trying to do too many things. It's a signal that I need to take a step back and a hard look at my schedule to figure out what needs to go. If letting things go is hard for you right now, I give you permission. Just let it go. It's not worth the hassle or the headache or the feeling of busy. You do not need to do everything. Despite what you think, you only need to do the things that keep the ship afloat sometimes. Everything else can be thrown overboard. If you're getting asked to be the next person to run a committee, are you the best person to be running that committee? Maybe the answer is yes. At least consider you'll have to say no if you say yes to a new committee. Regardless, you need to make a conscious decision if that time commitment will allow you to manage the busyness or instead of fulfilled, it will leave you exhausted and busy. Should that be the case, say no. Add the committee to your someday maybe list once your calendar frees up a little bit. Then at that time, maybe you can consider joining another board. Even though you're making a conscious decision to say no right now, in the future, it could be a yes. For me personally, I have to set the limit to only one board at a time. Okay, I lied. I'm lying to you right now. I didn't set the number. My husband told me I'm only allowed to be on one board at a time because I tend to take on too much if I have more than one board at a time. And he's 100% correct. Since the rule was established, I've also set my priority to create a decision matrix. Given all of these points, begin to know and understand your personal time bank. Well, okay, obviously, we all have 24 hours in the day. But what is your time bank? Let's figure it out. The simplest way to figure out your time bank is to know how much time you spend sleeping. Yeah, take that number and subtract it from your 24 hours. That's your time bank. So if you sleep eight hours, that leaves you with 16 hours to manage your busy. What you decide to do with your 16 hours every day is up to you. But how many hours you have to get everything you want to do done. And you may try to justify this. I did this. So one other point regarding busyness, it's really a thought. I know, right? I have plenty of clients try and tell me differently. And heck, I even try to justify it in my own personal coach when she points out that I'm merely having thoughts that I'm busy. Yeah, in the end, it is our thoughts. You guessed it. Your thoughts create the feelings that cause the action that give you the results. You get to choose the thought of being busy. Yep, I know. Try that one on for size and see how it feels. You may want to jump on the bandwagon and decide to choose the thought of calm and ease with me. But once you begin to look at all the ways your life feels calm and at ease, you'll begin to see them show up. You'll see everything will begin to change in your life by simply choosing the different thought. Okay, time to wrap this up, friends. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. And I hope you have a wonderful week.
Yay. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found this episode valuable and learned some actionable tips that you can implement in your business so that you can feel accomplished and less stressed. If you enjoyed this show, please take a quick minute to share this with your business bestie, subscribe, and leave a review. It helps me reach more business owners just like you. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future episodes, please reach out to me on my website. I've created a form just for you. Remember, with the right system and mindset, you can achieve the success your heart desires. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to chatting with you next time. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't forget, let's grow friends. Thank you.